Hello, AP Stats. Hope you guys are doing great today. I'm a little sick, so I'm a little, like, bleh. Sorry. I'll try to be as enthusiastic about this as I can. <laughs> okay, so 6-2. Um, there's two parts of 6-2. The first one is, like, linear transformations of random, random variables, um, like adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing by a constant. Um, and like how that does that affect the shape and the center and um, the spread of the distribution. Um, and then the second part, which is not going to be on this video, but that's combining random variables. So um, if you combine two distributions, how does that affect the mean of the new distribution? Um, how does it affect like the standard deviation of the new distribution? Anyways, today is only linear transformations. So um, remember that we did something similar to this in chapter two um, when we're talking about distributions um, of variables um, and when we multiply or divide by a constant um, the mean was also multiplied or divided by that constant and so was the standard deviation um, by the absolute value because standard deviation can only be positive um, but if you add or subtract a constant that changes the mean by adding or subtracting that constant from the original mean, um, but it does not affect the spread. Um, it doesn't affect the shape or the spread at all because um, you're just taking a distribution and you're moving it. So like the shape of it doesn't change, right? You're just like shifting it left or right. So anyways, that's what we're doing today. Um, so we're going to come back and fill out this chart after we go through the example, because um, basically I just wanted to show you why this is useful um, and when you would use this and then we'll summarize what we learned in the example. All right, CU Boulder. Um, CU considers uh, somebody to be full-time if you're taking 12 to 18 credits. Um, and so down below is the distribution of um, credits that somebody might be taking. So um, if you were to randomly select a student, a full-time student, um, the probability that they'd be taking 12 credits is 0.25. Probability that they're taking 13 credits is 10%. 5% are taking 14 credits and so on, right? You kind of get the idea. Um, so you want to find your mean and your variance and your standard deviation, which we've done in previous lessons. Um, so if you need to review those, please do. But just remember your mean is um, going to be this 12 times the 0.25 plus 13 times 0.1 and so on. Now keep in mind to get full credit you need to show work. Um, most of this you're going to do in your calculator. So the extent of showing work is like doing the first two terms plus dot 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 and then the last term and then you can do everything else in your calculator. So if you can see right here I've done um, all the work in my calculator and I hit enter and I get my um, expected value 14.65 um, but I didn't actually have to write down every single term so just keep that in mind. And to get your standard deviation and your variance um, you do the x value minus the mean time and square it and then times the probability of that thing occurring. Plugging well, this into the calculator, you get 4.2275 approximately. And then to get your standard deviation, you just take the square root of that. Um, so square root of 4.2275 um, is 2.056. All right, you can also draw the distribution of the random variable x. Um, hey, FYI, notation-wise, this mu sub x is important. It'll be more important later when we're doing distributions of means, um, sampling distributions, but for now, um, just make sure that you're specifying, like, mu sub x because our random variable is x and so we're taking the mean of x. Okay, um, If our random variable is y, label it as the mean of y. Um, just so that you can kind of distinguish between the different random variables and later, um, that, that'll help. 
with notation. And this is a graph of the distribution of um, the credit hours, right? So um, 12 credit hours, you have 0.25 or 25% of full-time students taking 12 credit hours. You have 10% of full-time students taking 13 credit hours and so on, right? So that is our distribution of the random variable x and um, that's the shape and the center and the spread. Okay, um, so then we're going to look at like if we change our random variable and we talk about maybe like tuition instead of number of credit hours, um, how does that affect the distribution? So let's move on to the next example. All right, part one tuition. Okay, tuition for a full time student is about $250 per credit hour. Um, so if we let our random variable, our new random variable be t, which is the tuition charged for a randomly selected full-time student, then t is going to be equal to 250 times the number of credit hours that they have, right? Which is where that comes from. Again, remember, x was the random variable, randomly selected student, number of credit hours, right? So the tuition is 250 times the number of credit hours that they're taking, which makes sense, right? So um, it says then create a probability distribution for t, um, a histogram of it, and then find mu and sigma. Okay, so this is going to look really similar to our last, um, our last chart, right? So basically I could like copy and paste that chart, except instead of the number of credit hours, now I'm having the number of credit hours uh, times 250. Because remember, if they're taking 12 credit hours, they're paying 12 times $250. Um, and then, you know, you still only have, you have 25% of people taking 12 credit hours, therefore spending that much money. Okay, so um, the following would be um, the distribution, right, where this 3,000 was that the 12 credit hours times $250, okay? Um, and then, you know, 13 credit hours times $250, etc. okay? So here's the problem. If you don't know how linear transformations work, you have to recalculate the mean and the standard deviation, which means, again, I got to do, okay, mu sub t is 3,000 times 0.25 plus 32.50 times 0.1 plus dot 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 plus the last one plus 4,500 times 0.15, right? And if you do that, you can you can always do that, but it just takes a really long time. Um, and then if you don't have the data, then that's a problem. But anyways, so you calculate that, you calculate your standard deviation. Okay, if you do it the long way, you get the following answers. And if you do it the way that you think you should, which is like, all right, we multiplied all of our x values by 250 to get our t values. And then, so we should just multiply our mean by 250. So our old mean was 14.65. If you multiply that by 250, you should get $3,662.50. Um, and the same thing with sigma, okay? Sigma was uh, 2.0561, and if you multiply that by 250, um, you should get $514.03, or two cents, depending on your rounding. Um, so that does work. Uh, just be careful um, because you're you are not multiplying sigma squared by 250 you're multiplying it by 250 squared so um, just kind of keep that in mind um, anyways so that works um, like we would expect it and then we also want to make a histogram um, or a, a probability distribution of that so um, you should it, it will look uh, close to the same thing as up here, except remember now your standard deviation is larger, which means it'll be
be a little bit more spread out. Now, since I changed my scale, obviously, um, my tuition charges are on my uh, x-axis, and then on my y is just my probability. Um, but notice, like, it looks exactly the same as this one, but that's because I changed my scale, right? Um, if my scale had stayed the same, it would have been way further spread out. Um, but I think this makes the most sense given the data. And the last question says, um, at CU, you have student fees which kind of pay for the gym and pay for, um, you know, things on campus, construction and things like that, kind of like taxes. You don't really want to pay it, but, you know, you kind of have to for the greater good. Ha! Um, so anyways, <laughs> student fees, um, clubs and things like that. Anyways, approximately $1,100. Um, and we'll call C, our new random variable, which is the total cost for randomly selected full-time student. Um, so that now, we're adding $1,100 to our previous tuition. Um, and so that's basically just, you know, we're gonna be taking all of these tuition values and adding $1,100 to it, um, finding the mean, standard deviation, and then making um, a histogram of that. And hopefully you should be able to figure out pretty quickly, it just takes the graph, shifts it over. Um, standard deviation won't change um, but your mean will increase by the $1,100. But we'll check it out anyways. So if you do all the calculations, you'll find, sure enough, um, the mean increases by $1,100. Um, so the previous one was uh, 3662, uh, so, and then add 1100 to it, you get 4762.50. Um, your standard deviation uh, your variance and your standard deviation stay the same. Um, because remember, standard deviation variance measure how far away from the mean you are. And if everything, including the mean, have just shifted, they haven't changed their distance from the mean. So that shouldn't change. Um, and then if you make your probability distribution, your histogram, um, it should look exactly the same, except your values on the x-axis will all be shifted to the right $1,100 because every value um, you add $1,100 to. And then you have your probability distribution. Okay, so um, now I guess we should just summarize what we learned or I guess reinforced from earlier, from chapter two. Um, so if you go back to the top of the notes, um, Right, if you, let's call A and B constants. Okay, so let's let A and B be constants. And X is the random variable that we're interested in. This actually works for both discrete and continuous random variables. Um, so if you are multiplying and dividing each value of X, um, each outcome by a certain amount. Let's say we're multiplying by A, right? So we take every value, all of the little X's, X sub one, X sub two, and we're multiplying every single one of them by A. So those turn into like A times X sub one, and B and A times X sub two, and so on, right? Then the shape of the distribution doesn't change at all, right? If you noticed earlier, like the shape of the actual distribution didn't change. Um, but the spread is multiplied by the constant, and so is the center. Um, regardless of whether it's the mean or the median, um, IQR, range, or standard deviation. Regardless of whether A is positive or negative, right, your spread is multiplied by the absolute value of it. Okay, because um, it's not going to change the direction of the spread. Um, but the mean and the median, both centers, um, are multiplied by the value, regardless, like, yes, including the positive or negative. Okay, shape doesn't change. Um, if you add or subtract a constant, um, spreads don't change at all. Center is you just add or subtract the value. Shape, again, doesn't change. And there you go. That's a lesson. 
See you later.